All right, everybody has Google Analytics installed on your blog or your website. If you don't, install it right now. Yes, definitely go get it. But the problem is that most people install it, look at all the numbers, kind of dig through every once in a while and like, okay, what do I do with this? And so they just end up looking at page views and that's it. But actually there's some really, really helpful numbers in there. Things that have like actually changed the direction of our business from seeing them. And so these are four hidden numbers in Google Analytics that you really should be paying attention to. The first one is gonna give you significant insight into which pages on your website are actually driving organic traffic from the search engines. This one can be a little tricky to get to, so try to follow me here. You go to channels on the left side, click organic search, and then you need to select your secondary dimension as landing page. If you just look at the organic search, what you're gonna see is a list of the keywords that drove traffic to your site, which seems really cool, until you see the big number at the top that includes almost all of the organic search to your, tra to your website in, in one, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just not helpful at all. Google doesn't want you to know what no, keywords they were typed in. They used to just give us this number. Back when I started, they would just tell you, and it was wonderful, awesome. yeah. but it just doesn't exist anymore. And so I find that this is the best way to get this metric. Now you could also get it in Search Console. You will find they don't always quite sync up um, what Google Search Console says and what Google Analytics says. And I find Google Analytics to be more reliable because this is just anybody from any search engine, not just Google, um, that comes to your website, what page did they land on? And that's a helpful metric because it doesn't exactly matter what keywords they typed in. No. All that mattered is that this was the right page for them. So whether they typed WordPress course or WordPress class, Google knows those are semantic terms. They mean the same thing. And so when I see my WordPress course article is doing well, I say, that's the kind of content I want to make. Um, not necessarily how many specific searches did I rank number one for. That's also important data, but different data. This is just a key thing. In fact, it's the thing that I check most commonly on Google Analytics is exactly that. It just helps you to understand which content on your website is really driving that organic traffic. Okay, the next one, we use this all the time when we do our coaching calls. We get people that, that sign up for a coaching call and they say, I have lost a lot of traffic on my website and I don't know why. And one of the very first things that we do is we go look at various articles across the website. You can do this just by going to um, behavior and then site content, all site content. Mm -hmm. And by clicking that, it's gonna give you a list of the articles and then the page views. We'll look at a few of the top articles. We'll look at a bunch that are kind of in the middle range and a couple articles at the low end. And what we're looking for is, is this traffic dip across the board or is it a dip in traffic on a handful of top pages? And they'll tell you totally different things. They will. Usually we find a few pages that were really hit hard. Now it may also impact some of the others just because you have fewer people on your pages that could be clicking other They're internal linking. links to your site. Google isn't liking your site as much because not many people are there, etc. But usually we find there are a few key articles that really got hit at a time. And there I'm gonna look at just, did I just get outranked and things like that. If it is just truly across the board that all of a sudden, shaboom, every article, oh, that was a neat sound that yeah. it made. Um, <laughs> then I'm gonna be looking at things like page speed. I'm gonna be looking at problems like SSL or something weird in, in the design um, or a Google algorithm update. Thumbs, if it's across the board, then I know it really isn't anything to do with specific content. And that like cuts the problem in half so that we can continue our detective work. What we hear all the time is there must have been an algorithm update, right? Did everybody's sites get hit like this? We get that question all the time. And the answer most of the time is no. no. It probably wasn't an algorithm update. It may be your host is having an issue. Maybe your site went down for a little while. Um, there are many, many different things that could lead to a site-wide issue, and that's gonna take a bit more investigation to figure out exactly which one it is. But and we find that to be rare compared to the sites that are seeing that dip in traffic driven by a handful of key articles. And it also helps you to know about seasonality. It's like, oh yeah, kind of all your content went down. And so That's it true. makes sense. Or this article worked great for this season, but not another. 
there are reasons and that's going to help you uncover them. Absolutely. All right, the next one is by far our favorite. Uh, this is... It's because we made it up. It's because we made it up. <laughs> yes, and it has a neat name. Of course we like it. It is the EPMP, which is the earnings per milli or earn, earnings per thousand page views. This is a key metric for us and has totally changed our approach to multiple sites by looking at this. So this number, uh, you're gonna just get your raw page views in a month, and then you have your total earnings you, that you make in a month, and you're gonna divide them. Really easy, right? And then you're gonna get your number. It could be anywhere from 20 to over 200 um, that we have seen on sites. And this just helps you to know a few things. One, just how well are you monetized across the board? Um, that's like the key because it's so easy to say, holy cow, this site made $10,000 and this one only made $2,000. Forget about that one. But then you calculate the EPMP and you say, whoa, this 2000 uh, this 2000 page view a month site may not be earning very much, but its EPMP is really high. I can earn a lot of money when I get people to this site. So actually I may want to put a lot of attention on this one because if I can get the traffic up, I could be doing really, really well. So it's a way to um, get a fair look at all of your sites that are at different stages in traffic and just look at what's the potential of them going forward. Right, and you may ask, why, why am I not just like looking at my ad RPMs and stuff and just, Honestly, we find that every ad broker kind of has a different way for them to measure RPM. Definitely. Some are looking at total page views. Some are just um, looking at unique page views. Some are looking at sessions. Yeah, it's and the you, session ones yeah, that are tricky. They want to make their RPM look, look better. very high. <laughs> <laughs> so they're totally different numbers. So instead what we do is we just take all of our earnings for that website, all of our revenue and divide it by the number of page views and then multiply by a thousand. That's per thousand page views. And that's going to give you this number. And Jim mentioned 20 to 200. We've found that most of our more passive websites earn anywhere from in their off season, like 20 to $25 per thousand page views. And in their good season, 25 to 35. That's for these kind of passive sites where we haven't really done any monetization beyond just kind of ads and affiliate products. They're really easy stuff to do that just doesn't require any oversight. But what gets really exciting and something that this, this metric really highlights for us is what can you do when you take that website and turn it into a known brand in that industry? Well, then your EPMPs can hit that number of more like $200, $300 per thousand page views. It's ridiculous what you can do once your website becomes a known entity in that industry and not just your little niche blog. Um, and so we're actually, our approach and our view of websites is totally changing. We're not talking niche site, authority site. We're talking, we build a website and we're always thinking, how could this someday become a brand if I want it to? And we're finding that really in any industry, that's totally a possibility mm -hmm. for a normal person to build. Yeah, when, you, when you're a little site, you know, you do ads and Amazon affiliate and that's fine. You can make significant money from that. But as you become kind of a pillar in the industry and people recognize it, they're just gonna be a lot more likely to buy your info product. They're gonna be a lot more likely to buy your membership course because you're a pillar in the industry. They wanna to go to you. And that's what, where you get a site that was 20 at one point and you take it up to 200, $300 EPMP, you know, on improved photography, that's what I did. That's what we're doing on Income School. We're building a brand and when you get a website big like that, that's what you can do. That's also what our vision is with all of our smaller sites today. Camper Report is earning, is getting you know 250,000 page views a month. We are doubling and tripling down on it like crazy right now because it has a pretty good EPMP for a small site. And we just see the potential to easily become a brand in the industry where we could just skyrocket the earnings. Absolutely. Okay, the next one, really needs a little bit of a story, I think, to illustrate just its total value. A little while back, just earlier last year, we met with somebody who built up a website to the point of it being his full-time income and ran it for several years as his full-time job. But then something happened. His traffic just tanked, seemed like out of the blue, and he had no idea why. He had to go back to the old life, and it was really hard for him to go back. 
after after having been able to live the way that the way that we talk about and the way that we live. Um, and we got to sit down with him and spend some time just looking at his website. And he had some ideas in his head of what might have been driving that and what he needed to do about this business. And they were all wrong. Yeah. All wrong. That's the thing. We they saw were, this one metric. Yeah, they were reasonable. All the ideas he said, totally I'm like, okay, reasonable. yeah, that could be it. But then we started diving in the numbers and we're like, that wasn't it. That's not the cause. And this one metric completely changed the trajectory of this site. Exactly. The trajectory of our whole conversation. Because all these hypotheses that he had, just they weren't founded in the evidence. And when we looked at this one analytic, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to tell you what the analytic was. Very simple. <laughs> you really built this one up. This better be good. It's, it is the page views, the percentage of total traffic on your site from the top few articles. This guy had one article driving over, I think it was 90% of the organic traffic to his website. If you, if you look at this and then look at that in conjunction to the first metric we looked at, which is the landing pages from organic search, he probably would have found that almost all of the organic search that landed on his website was coming to one page. It was a huge list post. It drove traffic to all of his other pages because of links. It was well monetized. One post that ran his whole business. And, and it would be easy to miss in analytics. Totally easy to miss. Because if you just look at the gross traffic, you say, oh yeah, I have a whole bunch of posts bringing stuff. But all of those other posts, they weren't getting traffic from a search. They were getting traffic from an internal link from this one giant post. And so you have to look at them in conjunction. You know, you look at how much of the traffic is brought in from that one post, that's gonna help us to see. And then you look in conjunction with your landing pages uh, from organic search and looking at those two together, you can quickly tell the story of what's going on. If you have a brand new website that's only got 10, 11, 12 articles on it, maybe even 20, it's not gonna be uncommon to see 40% of your traffic coming from one post, that's normal. normal. But if you're starting to get more traffic to your site, you've got 10,000, 20,000 on some so on page views. If you're seeing more than about 20% of your traffic coming from one article, that article is probably too big of a driver of traffic. Now I'm not saying back off on that article. I'm saying you need more content that's driving traffic yeah, to your site. Yeah, double down on that. See yeah. what worked and write 15 other articles kind of in the same genre because it's working. We just need to spread the love so that we aren't putting all our eggs in one basket. It is a, It creates a very high risk situation and that is the point that I would like to make with all of these metrics that we look at. Our recommendation, make a spreadsheet and just write down each one of these numbers. Calculate your EPMP every month, one time. You don't need to look at these things every day but you also don't wanna wait until your website's struggling to take a look at them. Just look at them once a month and just see how you're doing. If you're getting too much of your traffic traffic from one or two articles, let's dive into that. Let's look and see, are these, are these only driving 20, 30% of my uh, organic search results? Are these landing pages driving that? Or are they doing 40, 50, 60? That is scary for an established website. And if you're seeing these issues, then just get ahead of them. And that's going to allow you to have just a much more successful, much lower risk business model um, for your passive income or not passive income business. Mm -hmm. Now, here are two metrics to avoid, ones that we just entirely ignore yeah. in Google Analytics. The first one is site speed. It just isn't calculated well in Google Analytics. If you want to check your site speed, you need to go to Google Page Speed Insights. The other one is the time on page. And we actually have another video that we did in the past where we talked about why exactly we ignore that one. So go check out that video from the card here, or you're just gonna have to watch us stare at you awkwardly.